Why are Rahu and Ketu always retrograde? This is a very important question which we need to ask in the world of astrology. Many times people think, oh, it's just that they're retrograde, that's all. Some planets are direct, some are retrograde, but the problem is uh, why they are retrograde. And this question has many facets to it. We can discuss for hours and hours and hours. But if you do not understand this, then uh, we will not be able to understand what is astrology. And uh, we won't be able to make definite predictions also. And this is very useful when you are making predictions also. So for example, they say that Rahu and Ketu are uh, sudden planets. Sudden means anything happens suddenly. If either it's good or bad, it will be very sudden, we'll see. And it will be there, uh, they're like unexpected as this. Sometimes they can be unpredictable also. Now, of course, unpredictable does not mean you cannot predict the results, but why, why are they called unpredictable? Because, so suppose uh, Rahu is in somebody's seventh house and you are running the Antardash of that, um, this Rahu. So it can happen that you get married. So that is something which we can predict that the person might get married. But that can happen in a very unusual way, very, very unpredictable way. It can happen very suddenly. Okay. So, but the question is why, why, why at all do they uh, always go retrograde? Why, why are they never uh, direct? Okay. Or you can say the retrogression is their movement itself. So the movement itself is retrograde. So in a way they are direct and they never go retrograde, which means they never uh, go forward. So uh, not forward, sorry, direct. So the thing is why, why? See what Rahu Ketu represents. Rahu represents the reason why you have uh, taken birth in this world. Yes, Rahu is uh, the most important planet karmically in the horoscope. Because if it was not for Rahu, you would have not wanted to take another birth in this world. Why? Because he rules the 11th house. Yes, he is the co-ruler of Aquarius along with Saturn. So 11th house is the house of desire basically. All right, so 11th house, what is the 11th house? If you check the trines, 11th house is uh, a trine to the uh, third and the seventh house. So 11th house is the uh, fifth from the seventh house. All right, so what is the fifth house? Fifth house is your mind. What makes you happy? What, what are the things that you want? What are the things that you love? That is why... The fifth house from the Lagna shows love. It can be love of the family, children, and if it is linked with the eighth house and the twelfth house, it can show affairs. But the thing is, what is the fifth house from the seventh house? Yes, yeah, fifth house from the seventh house is the eleventh house. So what is the seventh house? When we are talking of karma here, we are talking of life, life and death. We are not talking of normal things like you know, marriage or career or wealth, family, all this. So here, the seventh house is the house of death because it's the house of exit. So sun sets in the seventh house. All right. So why does he set there? Because um, the thing is, uh, at, during the seventh house, the sun, sun, it's like, see, in fourth house, what happens? The sun is not visible at all. So the awareness itself is not there. But in the seventh house, what happens? The awareness of the sun is there, but it, it is at its lowest. Right? So fourth house is like saying, fourth house they say is like the graveyard. Graveyard means, or the, uh, sometimes they also call it as the smashan because eighth house is also the smashan. Okay? So it's like sleep. So what is the graveyard? Permanent sleep, right? <laughs> Twelfth house is sleep and uh, fourth house is uh, rejuvenation, but sometimes you don't rejuvenate. You are like uh, you don't need to rejuvenate because you are you are done with everything. You know that's like permanent rejuvenation. So in that case, that's the fourth house. But the seventh house shows that something which was there is now going down. So what happens when you get the news of somebody's death? 
you come to know that this person existed, but now this person is not existing anymore. That is how, the, have you seen the sunset? You, you see the sun, but you see it's going down, it's about to disappear. So that is what is the seventh house. So therefore, seventh house is the ultimate house of exit. It is the house of death, actually. And therefore, whatever you are thinking at the time of your death, that is the fifth from the seventh house, which is the eleventh house. And that is the house which creates desires, actually. Mm -hmm. So therefore, whatever, whatever desires you have, whichever planets are impacting your eleventh house the most, make sure you make a note of those houses because those are the desires that you might have during the time of your death the moment when you leave the you leave your body yes those in in fact those those are the plan those are the planets which uh, which uh, forced you to actually take another birth because your your current horoscope of this life is a snapshot of your past life all right so therefore, uh, when you are leaving your body, the, the 11th house will tell you of this life, what are the desires which you are having. Okay. So, and Rahu, Rahu represents desires actually. And Rahu and Ketu, they are like always retrograde because they are bringing out the desires from the past. So they are bringing out desires from past hundred lifetimes, thousand lifetimes, million lifetimes, billion, trillion, zillion, unlimited number of lifetimes. So what Rahu Ketu is doing actually, they are going and investing your desires in the 11th house. Okay. So therefore, it is very crucial that you understand this uh, game which Rahu and Ketu are playing actually. Actually, they are not playing any games. We, we are only giving into uh, these temptations actually. So Rahu represents the temptations. And what does Ketu represents? Ketu represents your ability to uh, survive those temptations. It's not exactly self-control, but Ketu represents those things which happen after you have uh, indulged in these desire sections. So have you seen as in scriptures, this, you know, Bhoga Tyaga, this thing is there. It's like a pendulum. So Rahu is indulgence. And then you get frustrated and you get confused. Then you go towards Ketu. Therefore, Ketu helps you to get enlightenment. Why? Because Ketu tells you that, look, anyways, you are frustrated with material things. You had always listened to Rahu, but uh, he didn't give you anything. He just cheated you. Okay. In fact, even if Rahu gave you so many things. Now, when I say Rahu gave you, I'm very cautious here. I don't mean to say you're Rahu Mahadasha. In general, I'm saying whatever, anything that you see in this material world is Rahu actually. Anything this is. Okay? Unless you are connected to Lord uh, Vishnu or you are very strong, not even connected. I mean, you have to be very strongly rooted to your spiritual practices and sadhana. Otherwise, what happens is your, your past life desires will keep coming and haunting you. And always remember, suppose, suppose, you, uh, suppose you have never... Uh, touched a cigarette. So imagine, yes, today you uh, smoked for the first time. Then tomorrow you have the option. Maybe or may not be, I might not smoke. Maybe I will leave it. But imagine you have indulged in smoking 100 times. So 101 number. Can you say no? Well, yes, you could always argue. I have the free will. I can say no. But Practically, it is seen 99% of the people, they cannot say no. Why? Because they are addicted. They are helpless. Their mind is dragged down to Tamaguna by Rahu and Ketu. Rahu especially. So, therefore, always remember that what that the, the difficulties of Rahu that you face in this life will increase in the next life. It won't go down. Right? Because they are bringing back desires from your past. So, that means so suppose he Rahu is bringing back desires from you know a thousand lifetimes. So that means in the remaining you know nine hundred ninety nine lifetimes you have already uh, indulged in that desire which was there one thousand lifetimes back. So imagine it will become more difficult for you to say no actually. All right. So therefore, whoever is uh, tormented by this material world, therefore they must do spiritual practices and. 
the best thing to do for Rahu is to strengthen your Jupiter. So I will put the link to my Jupiter video in the end of this video. So you can watch and you can do the remedies for Jupiter actually. They are they will be very beneficial for you. And the eleventh house is also the house of association. So you should have good associates in your life. Okay, you should have strong association, which means you should join a spiritual community and you should try to reap the benefits from the gurus, your god brothers, your god sisters, your seniors in the spiritual community, your equals, your juniors. Whenever you meet seniors, you take enlightenment from them. Whenever you meet equals, same age or same uh, frequency, then you should uh, share your your uh, stories and you should listen to them and take their stories. And whenever you meet juniors, uh, you should always try to enlighten them, uh, not try to dominate them or boast uh, what you have done to your equals or be envious of your seniors. That's what people do in materialistic society. Whenever somebody is more qualified, they become jealous, envious. Ah, that's nothing special in that person. Yes, it's me after all. So, uh, we may not say it openly, but that's what we think inside, right? And whenever we meet equals, in um, especially I have seen when there is, you know, alumni gatherings or you know, like a, a school, uh, what do they say, you know, alumni meet. So school friends coming together, everybody is boasting, you know, oh, I had gone to Paris, I had gone to Berlin, I had gone to London, all, all these things they are saying. I mean. External, they are showing as if they are just speaking, but uh, everybody can understand, you know, when somebody is speaking and when somebody is boasting. So this is how it happens. People are boasting about their appearance, about their knowledge, about their, you know, achievements, about their degrees, about their everything actually. But this is not how we behave in spiritual life. In spiritual life, uh, we have to be submissive and humble. That is why many people like the idea of spirituality. Have you seen people? Asking or googling or seeing videos in YouTube. Oh, I want to become spiritual, you know So and in the name of becoming spiritual, they just do some mental activities, you know? for example uh, sometimes you know, like uh, They will do so many activities like uh, I get people who tell me, you know, can you make some spiritual videos on ghosts? You know? And I'm like, there's nothing spiritual about ghosts. Ghost means there's a soul who did some nonsense and now that person is getting punishment. There's Nothing, you know, spiritual or, you know, metaphysical or, you know, whatever. I mean, these are all nonsense. The most important thing is to do spiritual practices every day morning. And that's very difficult. So when when I tell all this, then people they get offended. You know, and then they don't do. Some of them do, of course. They do, of course. <laughs> all right. So therefore, uh, the only way you can check Rahu is by associating with the spiritual community. Otherwise, what happens is you will be you'll be taking birth again and again in this world. So this life you have done, you know, A, B, C, D, engineering, MBBS, masters, PhD, economics. <laughs> Do you want to go all this next life also? Imagine next life you uh, come and you again learn A, B, C, D. But how miserable it is, right? You may think, oh, anyways, it's a cycle. What can we do? Nothing is in our control. No, that's nonsense. It's not like that. It is under your control. What your current actions will decide your next next birth, all right? And whatever you think at the end of your life, that will decide your next birth. That is why Krishna says in the Gita, Anta kale cha maameva smaran muktva kaleva. So Krishna also says, you know, yad gatva nanivar tante tandhama parama mama. He says that one who reaches my abode doesn't can't return back. And uh, many times some uh, skeptic, uh, skeptics and some uh, people, uh, special category people, <laughs> they ask me sometimes, you know, oh, I'll eat meat, I will go to prostitutes, you know, I will uh, drink wine, I will, you know, gamble, I will do all the nonsense, you know, which I think is fun. And at the end of my life, I will take a gun or I'll just chant the name of Ra. Ram, Ram, I'll chant Krishna's name, you know, then I'll go back to the spiritual world, right? Well, um, you could try doing that, but there's one small problem with it. Uh, you think you're very smart, but the problem is Ram is smarter than you. <laughs> because he's the source of all smartness, you see. 
so krishna says uh, that uh, if anybody uh, my my guru used to say you know krishna is the biggest cheater actually because why 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 because if you try to cheat him then he will cheat you in such a way that you will think you are winning actually <laughs> Yes, who is a perfect cheater? A perfect cheater is one who cheats you in a way that you don't even know that he's cheating you, right? So, Krishna is the perfect cheater. So, do not force him to cheat you. If you cheat him, then he will cheat you so bad that uh, you won't be able to handle it. Because Krishna says in the Gita, na, Matta smritir jnanam apohanam cha. That from me comes knowledge, remembrance, and forgetfulness. So, he is there as the Paramatma in your heart. So, if you are doing all the nonsense and not doing any spiritual practices every day, then at the end of your life, Krishna will press, you know, Krishna has three buttons, you know, like remembrance, forgetfulness, you know, it's primarily this two, you know, knowledge also. So he will press this button, tink, forgetfulness. <laughs> so then he will remember all the activities which you had done. And in, in, even the scriptures say that at the moment of your death, when uh, the soul is coming out of the body, you get a flashback of 100 lifetimes. Not this life, not tomorrow, not yesterday, not day after tomorrow, not day before yesterday. 100 lifetimes, can you believe it? And the body experiences a pain equal to 40,000 scorpion bites. Yes. So therefore, if you, are, um, if you are not doing spiritual practices diligently and associating with the spiritual community every day, every, every weekend at least, uh, then uh, you will have to suffer again and take another birth. All right. So don't die a miserable death. Don't take a miserable birth in the next life. All right. Perfect yourself and uh, go, uh, go go beyond this material world. That is the only way by which we can obtain uh, eternal happiness. Otherwise, puna punas charvita charvana naam, as Pralad Maharaj says, you know, cheering the chew, you know, enjoying with members of the opposite sex running after money, running after name, fame, power, position, like dogs and cats. This is what we have been doing life after life after life. So don't do this, put a full stop. Only then you'll be happy, all right? Do whatever is required to maintain your family, have a job and have your husband, your wife, your kids. All the things are permitted, but know your limits and don't waste time unnecessarily. Whenever you get free time, do spiritual practices, okay? Only that will help us. Otherwise, everything else will collapse one day and we will be wondering, what did I do in this life? All right. Thank you very much for your patience. And if you want a consultation from me, please go to my website down below. And if you're new, then please subscribe to the channel. And God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will find him. If you like this video, click the thumbs up and share this video with somebody who wants to know why Rahu Ketu is retrograde. And these videos are here, alright? I hope you like them.